romantic music. <laughs> Mud wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, come on. It's supposed to be bringing us together, Irving. Okay, okay. It worked. Yeah, it worked. Come on. Okay, listen. I get up. I say something that's important to me. Right. And if you agree, you move your chair closer. All right. Okay, and if you disagree, then you move your chair farther away. Gotcha. Okay, let's see. My job. That's important to me. Carburetors. Oh, the office awards dinner in two weeks. Stock car racing. Getting nominated. I would love that. Fly fishing, yeah. Sharing! Oh, oh they're announcing the nominees this week, honey. Of the 169 million adults in this country, nearly 37 million are single. 16,350,000 women and two men. I'm joking, of course. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Actually, man or woman, this is one of the most amazing times in history to be single. I should know. My name is Kathy. I spent last Saturday night celebrating my Employee of the Year nomination with... A box of Oreo cookies. My best friend Andrea was furious because my boyfriend Irving said he was going to be out of town for the awards banquet. The man is a coward, Kathy. He can't stand to see you win. My mother was furious because Irving was going to be out of town. Your father would have walked barefoot through a blizzard to be by my side when he was courting me. My office was furious because Irving was going to be out of town. What's, What's the, the point, point of having a relationship if we can't check out the guy? Irving was going to be out of town. I accepted that. In fact, some little part of me thought it might be good to go to the banquet on my own. This is my achievement. My moment. This is the kind of intense personal triumph that women in my generation have worked for all of our lives. Fourteen more of your friends just announced their engagements, Kathy. Traitors, how can they do this to me, Mom? According to this, Millions of women are getting sick of the independent life and are discovering the joys of good old-fashioned commitment. A woman who has accomplished something on her own at first will be happier all of her life. Single women have more cellulite. Where did you get that? I made it up. Mom, Mom, I like being single. Irving and I have a relaxed, perfect relationship. What did he think of your Employee of the Year nomination? Well, we didn't really discuss it. What did he say when you stood there begging and whining for him to change his plan so he could come? I, uh, left a message on his machine. <laughs> no wonder you have a relaxed, perfect relationship. You never talk to each other. When I was working on the Bailey presentation, Irving brought frozen dinners to the office five nights in a row and microwaved them for me in the coffee room. How romantic. I cannot believe it, Mom. Does a man have to say he cares for me in exactly your words or it doesn't count? We have five solid years of avoiding any kind of actual verbal commitment with each other, Mom. Does a track record like that count for nothing? Well, you're wrong, Mom. You are wrong, wrong, wrong. I hate it when she's right. I grew up watching old Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers movies on TV. They were my whole model for romance. I always dreamed that one day a handsome man in a tuxedo would dance me away into the sunset. Then the 60s and the 70s hit. I started dreaming about really doing something on my own. I never quit dreaming that I'd dance off into the sunset with a handsome man in a tuxedo. I just added the dream that when I did it, I'd be the president of a major conglomerate. Those three little words that have come to mean so much to us. She'll kill me. I'm going to kill you. Oh, I never know what to expect from women. Now, now Brenda, Kathy, j just wait. I, I can explain. <laughs> I love your bravery. Yeah, Kathy, listen. No, I... Irving. When I had to work late all last week, you said you understood. I know I did, but now, I... Now, it is my turn to be understanding. Well, it's Saturday night, Kathy. I figured you'd be at the office. Oh, Irving, I'm sorry. I guess I got a little carried away with my employee of the year push. A little carried away? Kathy, 
In the last year, I have given up the Saturday morning racquetball court time. It took me three years to secure, okay? I've lost my spot in the Friday night poker game with the guys, and I dropped out of the Sunday softball league all so I could spend more time with you, and then pff, you disappeared. What? I, I know. You know, Kathy, I didn't plan to start dating her. It's just that, well, there I was, ready to talk, and all my weekend sports events canceled, and Brenda came along, and one thing Brenda? led to another. Yeah, Brenda came along, and... Oh, 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 Brenda. Irving, Irving, you hardly know Brenda. I know, but it's just... You felt left out of my life, and you just needed someone to talk to. <clears throat> um... <clears throat> you were confusing friendship with romance. <laughs> it's silly. It's childish. It's something I do. Uh, yeah. Your butter is on a plate. Mm, what? She's been a part of your life long enough to get you to put butter on a plate. There is an artichoke in your refrigerator. Yeah. Leftover spinach salad, zucchini, lasagna. There is water in your ice cube trays and a lake was in oh, a lake was in in your freezer. Yeah, I just started eating. This it is not someone new. You have been seeing her for seven weeks and five days. No. Why didn't you say something, Irving? When? You've been at the office for the last five months. You told me you understood. I did. I understood you were busy, so I made other plans. Irving, when a woman says she understands, she goes out and buys a new outfit. What? Makeup. Sexy lingerie. The more understanding I get, the more money I spend at becoming beautiful for you. Your last business trip cost me $400 in the shoe department. When, when I'm busy, you, you buy clothes? I'll be mad no concept of when they're supposed to go shopping. I didn't want to just come out and hurt you, Kathy. Irving, before I would have been hurt. Now, I am hurt and humiliated. Oh, oh don't do this, please. I have spent all week defending you for not being able to come to my awards dinner, I, I and you that. mentally dumped me seven weeks and five days ago, no, no, and you no. said that... God, my mascara is running into my co contact. Wait. Let me get a Kleenex. No. <laughs> Irving, I, I, I can't see. Mm. Irving, I need you. I know. Oh, oh, great. Now I'm blind, and now I am groveling. No, no, you're not groveling. <laughs> I'm not? No. <laughs> Just wait. Okay. I, I can grovel. I know you can. And I can be better. Yes. Will be better. Yes. How could you pick her over me? Attention all employees, this is Charlene, your receptionist. The Office Awards Banquet is just 10 days away, and many of you still have not cast those all-important ballots. Remember, those wishing to put money on who's most likely to trash his career by getting drunk, saying something stupid, or kissing the wrong person, please check with your receptionist today. Uh, keep up the work for a few more days, and your Employee of the Year award is a cinch, Kathy. Can you take care of these? Certainly, Mr. Binkley. And look over these. Of course, Mr. Binkley. <laughs> Well, now I see why you're up for Employee of the Year. Most of us would have just wadded those up one at a time. I'm very efficient. Kathy, you were late on this Barley presentation all last month. Last month, I thought Irving was sitting at home depressed because I wasn't there. Yesterday, you said it didn't even matter if he went to the awards banquet with you. Yesterday, I thought Irving was going to be out of town in some slimy hotel all by himself. You know, we don't have to be together every second, Charlene. You know, all that matters is that I know that he is miserable somewhere. You're not going to ruin your chance for this award over some clown, are you, Kathy? Kathy is a professional, Mr. Pinkley. Professional people do not let some clown affect the job that has to be done. Thank you, Charlene. When you finish blowing your nose in the Ringler deal, would you mind sending it down to accounting? Oh, so what? My life is over, Andrea. Don't be silly. In one week, you may receive the most important award of your career, Kathy. These magazines said I could have it all. You lied to me, Cosmo. Kathy, contemporary women do not base our life happiness on the state of our relationship. We are above that. We are not searching for some Mr. Right. The search for Mr. Wright was begun by my mother when I was 11 hours old. That's my daughter. That's my son. Maybe they'll grow up and get married. The search continued until the very moment I met someone I liked. Mom, this is Jack. You're not getting serious, are you? 
Picking his setting. Too wild, too serious, too flashy, too cheap, too pushy, too cool, too whiny, too lazy. Sometimes I wonder if she thinks anyone is good enough for me. Baby, what happened? He was perfect for you. Kathy, we are going to get out of this apartment and expand your horizons. What if Irving calls and wants to make up? Yeah, what if Irving calls? Irving is not going to call. And we are going to find a date worthy of the employee of the year if we have to hit every sushi bar in town. She has to be here if Irving calls. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mom, Irving isn't going to call. Of course, in a way, Andrea is right. No one's looking for Mr. Wright anymore. We're looking for Mr. Relationship, a man who's strong yet vulnerable, brilliant yet sensitive, sexy yet loyal, huh? a man who can nurture, love, listen, support, succeed, cry, feel, care, share. We're looking for Mr. Miracle. A woman who's serious about meeting a man does not squirt banaka on a guy's necktie when he tries to open the door for her, Andrea. I thought it was mace and my aim's a little off, so kill me. I'm out of practice. You don't exactly have that come hither look yourself. Well, I didn't want to come hither in the first place. Kathy, there's a whole world of fascinating men out here. Give someone new a chance. All right, can I get you something? You think we can get it ourselves. It isn't that there aren't enough men or women, but that uh, by the time most of us get to the point of really looking, we've convinced ourselves we're superior to anyone we meet. Great hair. Spend the whole life waiting for her to get ready. I wonder if I could get him to throw out that tie after we're married. Gold bracelet should spend all my money. I wonder if I could talk him into getting a nose job after we're married. Too much makeup. Ugly shoes. Four. Balding. How oh, juvenile. You pig! I figured we could see the instructor better. What's wrong with the front row? The front row is for people with great seats or who are married. Married people get in the front row. Separated people are in the middle, and the more single you are, the farther back in the room you're supposed to be. Unless you have a great seat. If you're single and you have a great seat, you can be anywhere. Kathy, this happens to be a perfect environment for a woman to introduce herself to a man she finds interesting. And that's it for today. Andrea, I am not going to speak to a stranger when I look like this. Kathy, this is the 80s. No one's going to stand here judging you just on your looks. Men are interested in the same real qualities that we are. There, why don't you go introduce yourself to that guy? He's too flabby. Just say hello. Uh, hello. Um, well, maybe we could uh, get together sometime. Um, may I have your number? Yes, yes, I like your number, too. Well, bye. We broke up. The worst thing about dating is always feeling that everyone else is doing it better than I am. I pay a million dollars to know what it is other women do and say to get to a man's more gentle and sensitive side. Irving? What? You missed her. Let's talk about it. What? Do you miss her because she posed no threat to your sexual ego? What? Are you afraid I compare you to other guys I've been with? What? Are you insecure about your ability to please me? Stop! Get out of my kitchen! You know, I thought you showed real restraint by not phoning your answering machine from the lobby. Oh, yeah, I have it under control. There's no place in the world quieter than a single person's apartment with no message light blinking. Some people torture themselves by filling the silence with conversations they wish they'd had, pretending a slightly different word choice would have changed their whole life. <laughs> Irvin, the awards dinner is something I want us to share together. Darling, I marched barefoot through a blizzard to be there. Hello? Where have you been? Your father has been worried sick. Do I have to report to you every time I leave the house, Mother? Oh, why don't our calls ever sound like the telephone commercials? Oh, I'm sorry. Kathy, we just wanted to make sure you're not depressed. Do you want to speak to Father? No, it's... Hi, honey. Are you depressed? N no, Dad, I'm, I'm fine. Good. Well, don't forget to lock up. I locked up, Dad. You're in for the night, then? Yeah, I'm in for the night. 
Okay, as long as you're in for the night and all locked up. I'm all locked up. Okay. Well, good night, honey. Want to say good night to Mom? No. Good night, sweetie. Okay, Mom. Good night. Only a week left until the awards banquet, Kathy. Are you going to make it? I think so. I just have to write up the findings of 16 more studies. No problem. You've done that before. Convince four clients to spend another $35,000. You've done that before. And find the date. What's that? Here, your worries are over. Oh, no. Not a personal ad. Personal ads are a totally viable way for busy, intellectual, career-oriented singles to meet. Besides, we don't have time to sign up for another Oriental massage class. Forget it, Charlene. I have dragged myself to idiotic parties and mixers. I have begged for dates, groveled for dates, plotted and schemed for dates. But I am not going to answer a personal ad to get a date. Why not? It would sound like I'm desperate. Hey, don't worry about it, Kathy. If you don't want to go to the banquet alone, Esther and I will be happy to be your escorts. Single male 33 desires meaningful relationship. I love candlelight dinner, sexy music, and total honesty in a woman. Hello, are you Kathy? No. Singles today are blessed with the most advanced communication devices in history. The cordless phone, the automatic redial phones, computer phones, cellular phones, animal phones. In spite of the technology, singles often turn to a more old-fashioned approach. Call me, Irving! The awards dinner is in an hour! Just get sick of Goldilocks and get on a plane and call me! Hello? Sorry, sweetie. It's only your mother. Come on, Mom. You don't have to apologize every time you call me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kathy, your father just wanted to know if you changed your mind about taking him for your date tonight. Uh, I, I appreciate it, Mom, but, uh, I have a date. You met someone new? Oh, she met someone new, dear. How did you meet someone new if you were in for the night last night and all locked up? It's, it's, it's a blind date, Dad. I promised Charlene I'd let her fix me up with Steve if she didn't make me answer any more personal ads. Stephen, what a nice name. What does he do? I don't know what he does. What's his sun sign? I, I, I don't know his sun sign. Well, well, what does he look like? Well, he, I don't know. He might have brown hair. Oh, just like you. Stephen and Kathy with possible brown hair. I have to go, Mom. Oh, good luck, sweetie. Oh, I'm so proud of you, and I, I just know that our Stephen will be, too. Mom. Oh, sorry. Kathy, he'll be here in five minutes. Shouldn't you get ready? Ready. Oh, tonight is one of the biggest nights of your career. Andrea, I'm taking a blind date to an event where my entire office and most of my clients will be watching. So you should look fabulous. They're not going to be watching me, Andrea. They'll be staring at my date. Charlene said he was very nice. Yeah, yeah, nice job, nice conversation. You know I am getting sick of nice, Andrea. Where's your spirit of romance? Where's that naive, juvenile, idiotic sense of hope? Oh, I always liked that about you. Don't lose that, Kathy. Come on, hope, belief, trust that this time will be magic. Well, well, two for the price of one. You pig! Oh, my phone's ringing! Let me in! My phone's ringing! Hello? Hello. Irving! <clears throat> I, uh, thought you were out of town. Yeah, uh, my trip got cut a little short. Um, I was wondering if I could come over and get my stuff. <laughs> Tonight's, uh, my big awards banquet, Irving. Oh, I forgot. Um, well, maybe some well, other If you want your stuff, uh, you'll have to meet me at the grand ballroom of the Harlan Hotel at 8.30 tonight. <clears throat> and wear a necktie. Kathy, five minutes ago, you were depressed about being seen at your awards banquet with a blind date. And now you're excited about getting to return your ex-boyfriend's possessions in front of everyone? Are you crazy? As we get older, different things look good to us, Andrea. Thank you, thank you. And now, we'll have a brief intermission before the big award of the evening, Employee of the Year. You must be so nervous for Kathy. <gasps> you hardly touched your dessert. Charlene. Just because you'd rather be with a paper bag than the blind date I fixed you up with is no reason for me to be rude. Oh, you winked at me. Oh, for heaven's sake, Charlene. Thank you. And now.
now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Hold my hand, honey. Every year, the Employee of the Year Award is presented to one individual who has not only had a solid track record of outstanding achievement, but has contributed to the corporation and its clients in countless less times. Oh, yeah, the Employee Tom, of the Year Fuck. is a role model of... I want my Springsteen dates now. A leader with integrity. Finders keepers, loser sweepers. A devoted... Give me back my red plaid flannel shirt. Serious, uncompromising <laughs> professional. I'm proud to announce this year's coveted Employee of the Year Award goes to Kathy Andrews. Kathy, come on up and say a few words. Uh... <clears throat> Uh, thank you. There, there's one person that I, uh, there's one person I owe a lot to. Mr. Pinkley, the head of my department, has believed in me from the second I started here. I worked very hard for this award, but it was Mr. Pinkley who gave me the chance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. That was beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations. I thought you left. Well, I thought you'd have another date. I thought you'd be out with Goldilocks. Goldilocks had to work late every night, and then she got mad if I made other plans. Oh, just like me. <laughs> oh, boy, she'd want to discuss our feelings in the middle of Monday night football, but she'd scream if I opened my mouth during Dallas, boy. Oh, just like me. Oh, she'd say she wasn't looking for a big commitment, and then she'd go berserk if I mentioned your name. You mentioned my name? Oh, yeah, I'd say Kathy used to do the exact same thing to me, and it made me nuts. Oh. Women make me nuts, Kathy. You, you, you don't know what you want. Oh, and you do. You act like you're behind us, and then you disappear. You, you act like you feel nothing, and then you act like no one understands you. And then, you know, you... you. Well, what's the matter? I ran out of examples. Goldilocks never ran out of examples the way you always do. I uh, never danced with an employee every year before. Yeah, well, I never danced with a man carrying a shopping bag. Oh, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to learn not to be so macho. And I'm going to try to learn that even employees of the year have to make time for a date if they want a relationship. And I'm going to try to not run out and meet someone else every time you get busy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you, wait, you, you went out trying to meet other people? When did you do that? Better stay on your toes, Irving. There are lots of single men in this town. It's an amazing time to be single, all right. We're all free to be anything, but under a hundred new pressures to be everything. We work for deeper, more meaningful relationships, and then try to make them work in the ten free minutes we have a day. It's always been easier to leave a relationship if you're single. I guess in the 80s, it's just a little more challenging to stay in. Tonight on the season finale of Falcon Crest, a haunting revelation becomes a deadly force. But first, Jr. fights for his life and dreams are shattered on the climax of Dallas next.